Hello and welcome to the next lecture uh, in the course on introduction to computer and network performance analysis using queuing systems. I am Professor Varsha Apte, I am a faculty member in the department of computer science and engineering IIT Bombay. Um, so, in the previous lecture we uh, had uh, looked at open queuing network um, and we have been looking at open queuing systems. So, we will just look at some examples today. Uh, so, this is a quick recap again we have been seeing this slide uh, several times uh, this is just for your reference. Um, the little slaw uh, we have seen now many examples also. Um, this is the more recent recap we have learnt PK formula for MG1Q. Um, and the special case of that is for the MM1Q uh, where you take exponential service time distribution and then you can make a special case of this. And same with MD1, uh, D is also a special case of G and you get these uh, this formula for uh, response time. Um, we also uh, studied some properties of Poisson arrivals, again this is for your reference, uh, we are not going to repeat all this today. Um, Open queuing networks is a major topic we did uh, last time which is uh, this is again for your reference the parameters, the metrics all the symbols are here for your reference. Uh, the major results uh, for the metrics were all these we will actually do a major example where we use all of these. So, uh, please take a moment if you want pause the video and uh, make sure you have written this somewhere or you have your notes somewhere so that you can refer to it while we, uh, we actually work on this example. So, let us start with the first example. This is just uh, an example to revise the what the Poisson distribution is um, and uh, um, its uh, various properties. Okay. So, packet arrivals to a network link are Poisson with rate 4 per millisecond. So, let us uh, denote uh, uh, network link again it is nothing but a queuing system okay. and packets are arriving here at lambda is equal to 4 per millisecond. Uh, transmission time on this link of each packet uh, is exactly 0 0.2 milliseconds. So, that is nothing but the service time tau is equal to 0 0.2. Okay. Uh, what is the probability that exactly one packet will arrive at the link uh, during the transmission of one packet? Right. So, uh, the question here is less about the queuing system, we are not going to uh, talk about the response time or anything here. Um, if we just look at a timeline, uh, packets are arriving basically. As packets arrive, uh, if uh, they may queue or uh, at some point of time there suppose this packet arrives to an idle uh, link, then the, its transmission will start and it takes exactly 0 0.2 seconds. So, this is actually an MD1 queue, let us assume infinite buffer that is not given, but let us assume infinite buffer. So, uh, that is what this is. And the question is that while the transmission is going on, what is the probability that one more packet will come, okay? that exactly one packet will come. So, we have to use uh, just the fact that the packet arrival uh, uh, process is Poisson um, and what that means when you say Poisson with rate lambda uh, is 4 t is that it is 4 is that uh, remember if it is Poisson lambda with rate lambda then it is actually Poisson distribution with the parameter lambda t okay, where t is the, num, is the amount of time over which we are counting this number of packets. Okay. So, yeah just to recall arrivals are uh, Poisson with 4 per millisecond. That means, what does that mean? Number of arrivals n t in an interval 0 to t milliseconds is Poisson with parameter 4 t. Okay. This is just a short way, okay. this does not mean anything. What, what this really means is that number of arrivals n t in 0 to t milliseconds is Poisson with parameter 4 t. So, here our n t is the t that we are looking at is basically this is the 0 and this is the 0 0.2 and our 0 t is 0, 0 0.2 that is it that is what the problem is asking right. So, probability that exactly one packet arrives during the transmission is probability that n 0 0.2 is equal to 1. So, the random variable that we are looking at is n 0 0.2 okay, in this definition because we are looking at arrivals in the interval 0, 0 0.2 which is the interval which is of the 
transmission duration of the packet. Okay. So, n 0.2 is nothing but Poisson with 4 multiplied by 0.2. So, Poisson 0.8 and uh, so uh, some a ran a random variable which has this dis distribution. Remember for if a random variable is Poisson alpha uh, then the probability that the random variable takes the value k is nothing but alpha raised to k e to the minus alpha divided by k factorial. right? So, that is all that we are saying here our alpha is 0 0.8. So, it is going to be and the k that we are trying to calculate for is 1. So, we have uh, 0 0.8 raised to 1 is the alpha to the k e raised to minus 0 0.8 is this part and 1 factorial and this calculation turns out to be 0 0.36. Okay. Just an example to show uh, Poisson arrivals what that means. Uh, now another example consider a router with two incoming links, link 1 and link 2. The in, uh, so, again router uh, uh, here is uh, there are two incoming links to the router um, and what is it saying the inter arrival time in milliseconds of packets at link 1 is exponential lambda 1. Actually that means nothing but the this the arrival here is going to be Poisson lambda 1 right. We should just use that property. So, uh, and uh, here the arrival is going to be Poisson lambda 2 okay. um, and uh, uh, what is the probability that exactly 3 packets arrive at this router in a duration of 10 milliseconds. So, what we are looking at here is we are looking at the merge stream right. So, considering that uh, something is coming on one link, this is link 1, this is link 2 and packets are coming from link 1 at rate lambda 1 uh, with the Poisson uh, uh, nature and at from link 2 with rate lambda 2 with the Poisson nature, this is going to be nothing but Poisson lambda 1 plus lambda 2. right? And then that is all, then the rest of the maths is just like the previous one. What is it asking? What is the probability that exactly 3 packets arrive at this router in a duration of 10 milliseconds? So, yeah, so let us just look at the thing inter arrival time at each link is exponential. So, at link 1 it is Poisson lambda 1, at link 2 it is Poisson lambda 2, aggregate arrival stream nt is Poisson with lambda 1 plus lambda 2. And now the t here again is the 10 milliseconds, right? So, n 10 is what we are interested in. Uh, so, lambda t, so when it is uh, lambda and t, uh, the parameter for the Poisson distribution is lambda t. Here our lambda is lambda 1 plus lambda 2, our t is 10. So, the Poisson parameter is 10 lambda 1 plus lambda 2. So, probability exactly 3 packets arrive at the link. Again we remember e to the minus alpha, alpha to the k divided by k factorial. Here our alpha is uh, 10 lambda 1 plus lambda 2 that is our alpha and we are just plugging that in to get this. Okay. So, these are just 2 quick examples for the Poisson uh, properties. Now, let us look at our main example for today which is of the open queuing network. Okay. Um, so, suppose uh, this is the entire picture of the uh, open queuing network. What are we looking at here? What is this modeling? Uh, imagine that there is a website which supports 2 types of requests. Uh, request 1 and request 2 which both come to the same web server W. Okay. Uh, but then they split based on uh, what uh, function these requests are for, they, they split to 2 different application uh, that entire sort of 2 different backends. There are 2 backends, this is one entire backend made of application server A1 and database server D1 and this is other the other backend made of application server A2 and database server D2. This is a very common architecture. Uh, for example, uh, in a uh, typical call center complaints kind of website, uh, we could have a complete different system for new orders and a different system for uh, <coughs> complaints on existing product. Okay. This could be uh, a, a, a thing. So, um, yeah, so W is a web server, A1, A2 are the 2 application servers and D1, D2 are the 2 database servers. Okay. What do you want to do here? Uh, we want to uh, you know basically analyze the system uh, to find system throughput, utilization of each server, system response time, we want to know what the bottleneck server is, what, what the bottleneck throughput is, all this we want to do for given parameters. 
And uh, what are the parameters uh, for open queuing network? Remember, uh, we need to know uh, the, the most important parameter is the average number of visits a request makes to each of these servers, right? Remember that the request flows through the system multiple time before it exits. This is the exit here in this uh, queuing network. So, it may visit uh, uh, servers multiple times. Um, so, it uh, the, the analysis of an open queuing network depends very much on knowing what these average number of visits are for a request uh, before it completes. And of course, uh, the service times this is at, at one visit uh, how much service does the request need right at each of the uh, nodes. Now, suppose arrivals are poisoned with rate lambda. Okay. So, we have just one place where external arri arrivals come and that is uh, very uh, natural assumption that requests are all going to land at that front end web server right. This is the front the main web server. So, external ar arrivals obviously come to this uh, main web server. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, sort of the symbolic setup what are the values we are going to do this at. So, uh, let us assume that the average number of visits to each of these ser uh, nodes uh, or the servers is given. Uh, it is 10 for the web server, 13.3 for the application server 1, 25 for application server 2, uh, 9.3 for uh, database server 1 and 20 for database server 2. Okay. Um, and the service times are as follows 3 milliseconds for web server, 2 milliseconds for application server, again 2 milliseconds for application server 2, uh, 3 milliseconds for database server 1 and 2 milliseconds for database server 2. Okay. So, these are uh, I have kept them uh, examples as uh, really sort of low uh, execution times this is very typical of good fast websites today. Now, of course, everything is going to depend on how many times a request has to visit each of these. So, we will find out of course, that even though T A 1, T uh, tau A 1, tau A 2 and tau D 2 are all the same, uh, the service times are the same for application server A 1, A 2 and database server 2, um, they may not uh, the load on each of these servers will be totally different based on how many visits each has. So, it is actually straightforward right uh, compared to let us compare 13.3, 25 and 20. And clearly application server 2 is between these 3 application server 2 is going to be the one that is more loaded. And uh, same thing with the web server versus, uh, versus database server 1, they also have the same service time, but the visits are different slightly different. So, between these 2 we anticipate that the web server will actually be the more loaded. Uh, but so let us uh, uh, go ahead and find the bottleneck server and the bottleneck throughput first. Uh, so, the remember what we need to do to find the bottleneck server is to calculate the service demands. So, D1 will be V1 tau 1, D2 will be V2 tau 2 and so on. So, D1 for example, uh, V1 was uh, 10, okay. so this is going to be 10. Uh, multiplied by uh, uh, tau 1 tau uh, so sorry this is d w let us call this d w and v w tau w d uh, a 1 and v a 1 tau a 1. Right. So, V w was 10 and tau w uh, you can check here is 3 milliseconds right. So, this will be 30. Similarly, uh, V a 1 is 13.3 and tau a 1 is 2. So, here we have 13.3 multiplied by 2 that is 26.6. Uh, let us do one more and then that is just what is shown here. So, V A 2 is 25 and tau A 2 is uh, 2. Okay, so, D A 2 is equal to V A 2 tau A 2, this is 25 multiplied by 2, this is 50. So, similarly, 
D D1 and D D2 are also calculated, and these are the service demands we get. You know, 30, 26.7 actually because this was 13.33, so uh, 26.7, 50, 28 and 40. This is uh, we get by using the same formulae for each of these nodes um, and you can see that the one with the highest service demand is A2, right. So, the bottleneck server is A2, the bottleneck service demand is 50 milliseconds. So, uh, bottleneck throughput is going to be 1000 by 50 if we want to find out in terms of requests per second, right and that is 20 requests per second. So, the overall capacity of this system the maximum it can do in terms of completed requests is 20 requests per second. Okay, so, this we found out. Uh, now, uh, what we can do is for a given arrival rate we can try to do the rest of the analysis. Okay. So, uh, what do we want to find system throughput, node throughput and utilization of each server for a given uh, arrival rate. So, let us take lambda is equal to 16 requests per second. This is less than 20. So, this implies this is a stable system. So, we can actually do the analysis for all the, the nodes otherwise uh, it is an unstable system and we do not uh, bother with analyzing an unstable system. Um, so, uh, of course, the system throughput is for a stable system this is going to be just 16 requests per second. Right, this is an infinite buffer everywhere in open queuing networks we assume infinite buffers. So, the, that system throughput is actually here right. This is where the exit is that is going to be 16 requests per second. What is interesting here is just the node throughputs and the node utilizations right. So, for example, what is the throughput of the uh, web server ok. Uh, it is going to be equal to the arrival rate because we are again assuming uh, infinite buffer systems. Uh, so, this is going to be Vw multiplied by lambda right. The number of visits a request make um, request makes uh, to each uh, node multiplied by the original arrival rate. So, this is basically 10 multiplied by 16. So, it is going to be 160 requests per second for the web server. Uh, Let us do one more just for an example. So, again throughput of A1 is going to be uh, arrival rate at A1. Uh, and that is going to be visits to A1 multiplied by lambda and uh, visits to A1 uh, are 13.3 uh, multiplied by 16 that is turn, turns out to be this basically 213.3 requests per second. Okay. Uh, we can do one more uh, again just A2 maybe or let us do D1 what will be the throughput of D1 so number of visits to D1 is 9.3 multiplied by 16 so that is what this is around 149.3 requests per second Okay. Um, now, with these things we can also find out the, the uh, utilizations. Um, so, what are the utilizations going to be? So, let us do one or two here. So, uh, in fact, it will be interesting to do the utilization for A2. So, uh, the, uh, the lambda A2 is equal to 400 requests per second. Uh, tau A2 was uh, 2 milliseconds. Okay. Uh, so, rho A2 will be equal to uh, lambda tau uh, lambda A2 multiplied by tau A2 divided by 1000 because we should just have the same unit. This will be equal to 400 multiplied by 2 by 1000 and this is 0 0.8. Okay. So, the, this is the utilization of A2. Uh, similarly, each of the other utilizations can be calculated. You can do this yourself, right. The lambda 160 is here. So, uh, to get the rho, uh, the rho w, you have to simply multiply the 160 by 
uh, the tau for the web server which was uh, 3 and divide by 1000 and you can tell actually that this is 16 3s are 48 this is going to be 0 0.48 right. Similarly you can do all these calculations and verify that you get these as the utilizations. Uh, it is obvious uh, expected that uh, the utilization of the A2 server which is the bottleneck server is going to be the maximum that is 0 0.8 and this is more than all the other servers. Not only that actually we could have uh, calculated we would have known this even by looking at the fact that 16 divided by so 16 divided by 20 is also equal to 0 0.8. Right. And uh, 20 requests per second as an overall completion rate is the bottleneck rate actually of application server A2 right. This is what application server this is the rate at which application server A2 can actually complete requests not, uh, not their revisits but finish uh, requests completely and 16 requests per second is what the overall arrival rate was from, from external. So, uh, it all makes sense. So, actually one should check double check these things in different ways and things work out ok. okay. Uh, now that we have uh, we, we what did we find out we found out the bottleneck server, we found out the bottleneck throughput, we got the uh, node throughputs which are also the arrival rates because this is the uh, this is a stable system. So, remember for example, uh, this here the total rate here was lambda w and over here this is also going to be lambda w although this is throughput this is also going to be lambda w. Similarly, this here the complete arrival rate here was lambda a1 and the throughput here was also equal to the arrival rate ok. This was lambda d1 and what goes out here is also lambda d1. Uh, yeah. So, now uh, let us look at the response time that is the next thing to calculate. So, what do we want to do? We want to find the response time at each node uh, and, uh, and also of course the entire system response time we have 16 requests per second coming in here. We know we have 16 requests per second leaving also since it is a stable system, uh, but when they come in here what are the per visit response times, how much time does this take, how much time does this take and so on and what is the total time ok. So, here uh, remember we will use Jackson's result uh, all these times of course, we have to assume to be service times are, uh, have to be assumed to be exponential this has to be arrivals have to be assumed to be Poisson. Okay, branching should be memoryless then we can apply Jackson's result um, and what is Jackson's result? Each node behaves like an m m 1 in this case 1 q ok. So, now recall you can refer to your slides and recall what the response time uh, average response time of an m m 1 q is. Uh, it is basically for any for the ith q it is going to be tau i divided by 1 minus rho i right. So, for example, r w is going to be uh, tau i is 3 milliseconds rho was um, 0 0.48. So, this is 1 minus 0 0.48 and this just uh, turns out to be 5.8 milliseconds. We can find out uh, A2 since it is the bottleneck. So, R A2 tau is 2 remember the utilization was uh, 0 0.8. So, this will be 1 minus 0 0.8 this is 2 divided by 0 0.2. Uh, so, this is equal to 2 multiplied by 5 that is 10 milliseconds ok. So, that is what is here. So, similarly we can find for uh, a 1 d 1 d 2 you can just plug in these values and this is the set of per visit response times you get. Uh, system response time remember 
uh, has to take into account the multiple visits also. So, this is actually summation i uh, v i r i ok. So, we have all of these things. So, actually this is basically 5.8 multiplied by 10 plus 3.5 multiplied by 13.3 plus 10 multiplied by 25 plus 5.4 multiplied by 9.3 plus 5.6 multiplied by 20. Okay, so 10, 13.3, 25, 9.3 and 20 were the visits. Okay, these were the average number of visits and we are multiplying each of them by the per visit response time and this total turns out to be 5. 5 and 6 milliseconds. So, you can verify all of this and uh, yeah, do not just uh, kind of uh, follow this on video, you uh, feel free to pause it and do the calculations yourself. Okay. So, uh, this is actually uh, the example for open queuing network that uh, we wanted to cover. Uh, in the next lecture, we will be looking at a completely different kind of uh, queuing system uh, where the server and the queue and everything is the same but how we uh, model the arrivals is different, so thank you.